Let's take our Bibles today and open them to the New Testament book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, and I give you time to find that book in your uh, in the Bible, in your copy of God's Word. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to take just a minute as you listen to speak to you uh, specifically uh, that uh, watch online or listen to our messages on Sunday and uh, to give you a little bit of uh, uh, heads up, a little bit of insight on what happens with our online services. Uh, sometimes we uh, are able to put the services that we do on Sundays directly online. Other times we pre-record and place those services online for just those that watch or listen uh, that they maybe can't get to the property like some of you are uh, not in Watkinsville or some of you may be local but physically unable to be present but um, there are occasions when uh, those uh, ways of putting things online do not come together and so if you ever go to the site that you would watch the services and you can't find the service I want to encourage you to check back later in the day or this past week we had some things that were just uh, going on with our uh, staff team that made it where the services didn't go up until later in the week and that's just gonna happen from time to time with our online services and so uh, if, you, if you go and you check and you can't find the service, I want you to know that we haven't just automatically, without letting you know, decided to no longer uh, put the services online. There's been something that has stood in the way. We are uh, continuing to do this, continuing to provide it. It allows people an opportunity to connect with our church when they're out of town or away or sick. It also... Uh, is a way for people to have um, uh, continued connection with our church even after they've moved away from here because of jobs or, or some kind of life situation. And then uh, a lot of you have church homes where you are and you still connect with the messages and this is in no way meant to take the place of uh, you being involved in a local church where you are. But uh, we are continuing to provide this. And so those times when you don't find it, uh, check back later in the day or check back later in the week. I specifically want to ask you to take some time to watch the third message or listen to the third message in the series that we've called Worth It. Uh, this is our fourth week. And you may have missed one of the weeks, and they all really weave together. And they weave together because we believe that all four of these uh, topics we're looking at from God's Word, that when you narrow down to what is really important, we're saying for us as a local church, this is what's worth it. We we have unlimited opportunities in our life but we have limited resources it's true for us personally and it's certainly true for us corporately as a church several hundred people coming together to worship with a lot of different passions a lot of different interests even a lot of different needs and a lot of different experiences and when you have only so much time, only so much financial resource, only so much energy as a church, you have to narrow down. And through much prayer and study of God's word and understanding where we are and the season we're in and the life that we believe God has called us to, we've said, here are the four treasures that are worth it to us these are the four buoys that guide us these are the four 
values, if you will, that really help determine how we're going to go about fulfilling our purpose and mission of bringing glory to God by making wholehearted followers of Jesus Christ. The very first week, we said that the Word of God is worth it. You say, worth what? It's worth our time. It's worth our money. It's worth our energy. And when we say it's worth it, we're saying that we're giving time, we're giving money, we're giving energy to preaching the Word and teaching the Word and carrying the world, carrying the Word to the world. We said the next week that relationships are worth it. We plan accordingly. We build structures accordingly. We reach out to one another and uh, it, I, because we believe that relationships are worth it. It's the goal of the gospel. It's the model of our creator who's in relationship. And we say that our, our money and our our time and our energy is worth the effort of keeping strong, healthy relationships with one another. And then last week, uh, we said that generations are worth it. And what we're saying is, is that we're not a church uh, that's just using our time, energy, and resources on children. We're not a church that's just using our time, money, and energy on college students or senior adults. We believe that every generation is worth it. And so when you think about investing uh, your time, giving your money, uh, in taking your energy and putting it somewhere, uh, one, we want you to know this is what our church is about, and two, that what we are about, biblically, we believe it's worth it. Eternity matters. Now, we've come to a fourth worth it Sunday. And just a little bit of a, a glimpse into the picture may give you a little bit of an, uh, an idea of, or a question and say, what's, what's that at his feet? Or what's that in the background? Or, uh, well, I'm standing in a room right now that is decorated, that uh, is decorated that calls my attention to beyond these walls. It calls my attention to the world. And this morning, what we're saying is worth it, is living on mission. Living on mission. And what we're saying is a treasure of ours, a value of ours, a buoy of ours, is that we come together as a church, we equip, we encourage but we send back out. And the purpose of the church and the effectiveness of the church is, is not found just in our huddle and in our gathering. It is how we go away from that huddle and away from that gathering. We are, on Sundays, the church gathered. But on every other day of the week, we are the church scattered. We, we come together, then we go. And I want every one of you listening today that when, to, to hear that when we look at God's word, what we see for the believer is, is that every breath that we've been given is breath that is to be used to bring glory to God. That we're living sent. Jesus Christ came to this world so that we could have a relationship with God and then he sends us out to the world for us to introduce others to a relationship with God. And I'd ask you to think for just a moment, are you living on mission? Do you see this day? Do you see your week? Do you see your life? You're going and coming. Are you living on mission? Some of you are teachers. Some of you are mechanics. Some of you are retired. Some of you uh, are policemen. 
some of your coaches, some of your doctors, lawyers, a lot, all kinds of different vocations. But we all have this same commission, and that is to live on mission, live sent. And uh, it could be in um, Watkinsville. It could be in another state. It could be you going to another nation. It could be you going to the ends of the earth. Uh, we value living on mission. Now look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and listen to the Apostle Paul as he speaks about this. He says in verse 14, But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not like so many peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, reminds us still today that as believers in Jesus Christ, we are commissioned by God. We're, we're, we're to live on mission. We're to live sent, not because the Apostle Paul sent us, not because Pastor Carlos sent you, but we live on mission because when Jesus Christ came to live in us, God commissioned us. God himself said, now go speak for Christ. And he uses a picture in this uh, these two verses here, the three verses here that describe what happens when we go out commissioned by God, bearing the name of Christ and speaking of Christ. He speaks of it as a fragrance. He speaks of it as an aroma. It's a very picturesque word to give us the idea that we are to permeate the world that we're going into with some kind of aroma, some kind of fragrance, some kind of uh, odor that just like a, a smell uh, would, uh, would saturate the air around us, our relationship with Jesus Christ, what we know of him, what he's done in us is to saturate the world around us. And, and it's, a, it's a beautiful picture of how uh, the, the life of Christ in us is to overflow on someone else. It's very, um, very common in my world, in the life of the church, by the end of the day on Sunday, to shake a lot of hands. And more now than it was the last couple of years to hug a lot of necks. But especially to shake a lot of hands. And there are times when I leave and I go home that I uh, have talked with someone and I've known them for long enough to know a certain cologne they wear. And I shake their hand and I'll get home and I think, uh, come, I have a name in my mind, I'll think, are they here? Are they in the house? Are they somewhere? And it's not them, it's their aroma, it's their, uh, it, it's their um, fragrance. And, and, it, and it's attached to that person. And, and the Apostle Paul is saying for us, when we have Christ living in us and we get around to other people, when they leave our presence, they're, they're going to be affected by who Christ is because he's in us, on us, working through us. You say, practically, how does that 
how does that come through? It comes through in the way we speak. It comes through in the way we relate to people. It comes through in the way we use our time. It comes through in the way we spend our money. It comes through in how we expend our energy. It comes through in our opinions. It comes through in how we listen. And, and it's just, it's Christ filling us and then Christ permeating the world around us. And it would be good for us to ask the question, are people surprised when they find out that we're a follower of Christ? Do you know, just in recent days, I had a conversation with someone who, whose children are new to our community. And the children who are new to our community are also new to the schools and new to church. And those students have attended functions here in, in the life of our church. And they talked about how as their uh, kids got to know new people at church, they have begun to cross paths with them in their schools. And then some people that they've met at their schools, they start to cross paths with uh, at events at church. And they, they talked about the their, their worlds colliding and how sometimes kids who are new have been surprised when they walked in and saw kids in their activities here and began to think back on what they had experienced with those same kids in another environment. Now, it's not limited to kids. That, that happens with adults. It happens with how we relate to people. The, 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 what Paul wants us to see here in this word is that um, when Christ is in us, that is going to permeate our atmosphere around us. But listen, it can be positive or it can be negative. Look at these verses, and, and I want you to think with me for just a few minutes here about what it looks like to live on mission, particularly with this idea of being the fragrance of Christ in the world that we're in. And three comments I want to make, really simple outline, and, and about living on mission. And here's point one from 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Living on mission is a get to for us G-E-T second word T-O living on mission is a get to it's not a have to it's not a oh no now that I know Jesus I've got to talk about him it's not a it's not something that we have to check a box on and and clock in and clock out it's, it, it's, it's bigger than that it's more than that it's richer than that and you see it in verse 14. The Apostle Paul says, But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. That, that phrase is the Apostle Paul saying to people who are suffering tremendously because of their faith. Not suffering tremendously because of weather or the economy or their health. They're suffering at Corinth at the time he wrote this letter, tremendously because of their faith, because they bear the name of Christ, because they give off the aroma of Jesus. They're suffering. The Apostle Paul had suffered, suffered enormously because of his faith. But his attitude is it was a get-to. It was a privilege it was a gift. It was a blessing. And he comes at living on mission as being something worthy of offering thanks to God. But thanks be to God. God, thank you. You've blessed me. You've given me a privilege. I get to bear the name of Christ. I get to bring up the good news of Jesus. I get to represent Christ. When I'm around people, they can have the aroma of Christ that 
is around them and overflows on them. But thanks be to God. And he, and he points out this, this gratitude is, is based in the fact that it's a victorious life. He says, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. There would have been an image in the Apostle Paul's mind of a king riding in a parade where there were trumpeters and music makers and people dancing and animals walking in procession and even the, the spoils of the victory of battle all in that parade and it would be a march through the city of saying we have won and the apostle Paul says when Christ is in us when we know him as our Lord and Savior we're in a position a position of gratitude not one day a year not uh, one day a month he said who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession he said when you know Jesus Christ and you walk into this world, you're walking in the victory of Christ. You're in a salvation parade every day of your life. Suffer? Yes. Winners? Absolutely. And he's saying to us to live on mission, to live with this attitude of gratitude. It is a get to because of what Jesus has done. We had to think about it. We had to preach the gospel to ourselves again and realize that we were dead in our sins. We were in debt to our sins. We had offended a holy God. He loves us and wants a relationship with us. And we couldn't do anything about it to bridge that gap between us and God. But he sent his son Jesus. And Jesus took our sin. And he died on the cross and he paid the debt of our sin. And he gave to us his righteousness. When we believe in Jesus Christ as the one who died to pay for our sins, we receive him as savior of our sin. What we get in return is the righteousness of Christ. Our account of the debt of sin that we owe, our, uh, our lives being objects of the wrath of God, that is removed, it is satisfied, and the righteousness of Christ is given to our account. And the Apostle Paul says, you know what that means? You're victorious. You've triumphed. You've triumphed over sin and the grave because of what Christ Jesus has done for you. you Maybe listening right now, you need to give your sin to Jesus. You need to receive his righteousness. You say, how? Ask him to forgive you. Believe today that Jesus died for you. And believe that he, he was raised from the dead. And follow him the rest of the days of your life. Just call out to him. Just save me, Jesus. Believe in him. Trust him. And then from there, every day, from then on, he says, you are led in a triumphal procession. Living on mission is a get-to. Number two, living on mission is, it's a going-to. What I mean by that is, is what's in verse second part of verse 14. He says, but thanks be to God who in Christ Jesus leads us in triumphal procession. And then he says, and through us, spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere for we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing it's not a decision when we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior maybe you just did maybe you just called out to him to save you from this time on the rest of your life you are going to be some fragrance for Christ People who bear the name of Christ become living, walking billboards for who Christ is. And honestly, the tragedy of that is, is that many people have a very uh, low view of what Christ does in a life or what a church is. Because we've given off an aroma in the name of Christ that is different 
than the Christ that is described in the word of God. But the beauty of that is, is that when we receive Christ and we follow him with our whole heart, that when we go into the world, people can see Christ. And according to this passage, if you will, people can smell Christ. It's going to happen without us deciding to or not deciding to. Living on mission is what we become. We become walking missionaries in the world around us. We're all on some kind of mission. And our lives are going to bring people toward Christ. Or our lives are going to push people away from Christ. Or our lives are going to leave people knowing something different than the real Christ. And what I'm saying to you today is that we value living on mission. We value living according to God's word who Jesus is. And I'm praying that every one of you listening today would take that on and recognize, you know what, I get to be on mission Every day I am on mission and I'm going to represent Christ today in my world. And here's the last thing. Living on mission is a got to. Now, I don't mean got to in that you got to do it in order to earn something. I mean, we've got to view living on mission with intentionality under the urgency and burden that every day we're in a world of people that do not know Christ. One of the things that happens in the life of our church is that I can teach the word and declare the word and preach Jesus, but when you're dispersed into this world, the mission field expands exponentially and you just right here from Watkinsville to the ends of the earth this crowd can go just this past summer uh, we've had people on continents all around this globe that go and come back and go and come back go and come back and, and we've, we've got to see our lives as being that kind of, 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 of worker for Christ, whether we have an income from some other field or not. But with Christ living in us, we see that as I go, God is taking me to the world around me to be the aroma of Christ. We live... In a, in a world that statisticians tell us that right at 155,000 people a day in our world die without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And for you and I, we get to bear the name of Christ. We're going to bear the name of Christ in some way, but we've got to bear the name of Christ because our world is lost and dying without Jesus and so to wrap things up I want to ask you today are you in a place where you realize that it's worth it to be passionate about being the aroma of Christ in the world around you and if not would you ask the spirit of God today to revive you to forgive you to bring to you a fresh fire for living on mission right where you are. I also want to ask you today, if you're listening or watching, is it possible that God is calling you to live on mission somewhere else other than where you are? Is it possible that God has brought you to this very moment to affirm or confirm or to stir in your heart to call you to live on mission maybe 
in a different state or in a different neighborhood or a different nation. And he would say to you, I want you, with the aroma of Christ that's flowing through you, to go. You say, where? I don't know where, but would you just put your yes on the line today? You know, the Spirit of God is saying to your family, saying to you and your family, or maybe saying to you as an individual, I want you to go. You don't have to know where yet. You don't have to know where. You just have to be willing. And then God will say, okay, next step. Why would he show you where you would be going? If he hasn't heard you say, yes, you will go. Third, I want to ask you if you would make a fresh commitment to invest your time, to invest your money, to invest your energy in seeing the good news of Jesus Christ go to the world. And I just leave it right there. If the Spirit of God says, you, hey, it's time for you to move the treasure of your time. It's time for you to make a change in the treasure of your money. It's time for you to adjust what you're doing with your energy. I want you to focus more of your resources on getting the good news of Jesus to the world. I want to invite you to be obedient to the Lord. Lots of opportunities in the life of our church that I could talk to you about, about how you could go every day of your life in this world, how you could invest financially, how you could invest your energy, perhaps through praying or serving. And I'd love for you to respond today to this message. And you could do that in a real simple way. Just send a note to info at watkinsville.org. I-N-F-O at Watkinsville.org. Put what's in your heart right now that the Spirit of God is saying in that note. We'll get it and we'll respond and help you even take another step in what it looks like to be obedient to God, to live on mission. Father, we love you. We exalt you. And I pray that you would raise up a mighty church that's living on mission, that's demonstrated in the use of our time, money, and energy. In Jesus' name, amen.